The latest hotfix for Dark and Darker has introduced a gear-based matchmaking system for normal lobbies. So, unlike before, now you can bring in any items and equipment you want into normals, but if you have a bunch of stuff on, you're going to be put into a more difficult lobby. If you want to stay at the base level normal lobby, you need to have a gear score of 24 or less. Any gear score of 25 or above, and you're going to be put into the lobby that where just anything goes. So if you're looking for a more balanced game, a cleaner look at the game where everyone's starting with basically the same level of gear, you want that 24 or below gear score lobby. Did I drop into high roller? Did I drop into high roller? No, what the heck is going on? Is it 25 or above? This guy's got a gear score of 248. Is it 25 or above? Above 25. Uh oh. So for this video, I want to walk through a recommendation for a sword and shield fighter build that keeps the gear score at 24 or below. We'll talk about perks and skills, and then we'll drop into PvP, and we'll do some post-combat analysis. He's got his throwing axes. I blocked his felling axe. He's going to miss. Now I can hit and hit, because it takes a long time to recharge. A block. Hit. Wow. Oops. So that was a pretty clean fight. So the first thing I want to do is go to my squire. Because there's a couple of squire pieces we can pick that are going to save money and give us the stats that we want. I'm looking for cloth pants and adventure boots in particular. Why? Because both of these pieces give me dexterity. And I'll talk more about that in a sec. So adventure boots, cloth pants. Also make sure that you've got your heels and your other utility. And then I'm also going to pick a heater shield. Because I don't want to buy this later. I can I can pick it up now from the squire. I choose a heater shield over a round shield or a buckler. Because the heater shield gives me the most coverage. It's basically the easiest shield to use. That's why I'm going to pick it. Blocked him. Blocked him. I went for the trade. That was a bit dangerous, but... Whew. GG, man. Okay, I'm happy with this. I'm going to set base gear. Equip base gear. Okay, here it all is. Great. So now, let's go to the market. And let's buy a chess piece. I like to get a Grand Brigadine. We're going to search for any rarity. I just want the cheapest one. Look how cheap this is. 60 gold. I'm not really that concerned about the secondary stat, like the blue stat. They're all going to be pretty crappy at this low price point. But that's okay, because I'm just getting it really for the agility and dexterity. I'm going to buy this Grand Brigadine. So with this Grand Brigadine, plus my cloth pants and my adventure boots, I'm at a gear score of 18. Let's look for a helmet and for gloves. So I'll go to the merchant. Okay, I was able to buy heavy gauntlets and a crusader helm from the merchant. And these are my five base pieces. Why do I pick these five pieces? Because these pieces stack for dexterity. And you can see that down here. Dexterity of 22. The reason I'm stacking dexterity is because for a sword and shield fighter, dexterity is the most important stat. A higher dexterity increases your action speed. Action speed determines the speed of your attacks and the speed of your blocks. So the higher dexterity you have, the faster you attack and the faster you block. And that's really important for a blocking first, counter-attack, fighter playstyle. I love fighting clerics. Okay, let's buff up. He's got a quarter stab. Traded. <clears throat> it's going for my feet, which is smart. The second wind. Yeah, that was close. I blocked a few of his shots. The hello. The quarter staff has kind of a weird swiping pattern, and I'm a bit familiar with it, so it didn't catch me too off guard. Now I want to go back to the marketplace, and I want to look for an arming sword, because I want a slightly better arming sword than the one I get from my squire. And look, I can buy this for 40 gold. Ooh, and I can get a 28 damage for 40 gold. I want that. 
Okay, so we've spent maybe 150 gold so far. I've got an arming sword, a heater shield, and the rest of my armor. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. My gear score is 22. Before I talk about the offhand, let's go through the perks and skills. For perks and skills for this fighter build, the first two perks I recommend are shield mastery and counterattack. Shield mastery means when you successfully block, the next action you get is a lot faster. That pairs really nicely with counterattack, which gives you an additional movement speed bonus and action speed bonus after you successfully block. So both of these perks together really incentivize blocking first and then counterattacking, and that's what we aim to do. Oh, I should have waited. I should have waited. I recommend Barricade, because Barricade means when you're in defensive stance, you gain an additional 50 armor rating and an additional 50 magic resist. So if you're hit in the legs or the head by other melee or magic damage, the amount of damage you're going to take will be reduced thanks to Barricade. Previously, I would have recommended Sword Mastery for a little bit of extra damage and a little bit of extra action speed using a sword. But going forward, I think I'm going to try Weapon Mastery. Because Weapon Mastery is going to give me access to a bunch of different weapons, and we're going to see how that goes. Now, because I have Weapon Mastery on, I can buy a Survival Bow. Put that on. And I'm at 24. So here I am, right at the limit of the gear score for the lower lobbies, which is where I want to be. Buy some arrows. The other thing I've been messing around with is using a buckler. So having a buckler in my inventory is interesting because what it lets me do is it lets me switch from my heater shield, which is a bigger, slower shield, to the buckler, which is a much smaller but much faster shield for me to use. This is important for chasing down faster classes. If I'm fighting a barbarian or another fighter, if I'm up close and personal using my melee, I want to use my heater shield because it's easier to block. But if there's a ranger or a caster like a wizard or a warlock that I'm looking to chase down, I can switch to my buckler, and it lets me move faster. In addition, with the Shield Mastery perk, when I'm in my defensive stance, with my buckler out, I get an extra 10% movement speed bonus. So those things combine to make me move even faster. And in this game, having a higher movement speed can make a really big difference. As it rests. Here goes. Two hits. Oh, there goes the fighter. Lucky block. <laughs> GG, guys. Sorry, dudes. For skills, Second Wind for new players is highly recommended. It lets you make more mistakes, you're going to take damage, and Second Wind is just like a free 40% health recovery. So definitely go with Second Wind. In the past, I would have recommended Sprint, but Sprint has been nerfed. You only get 20 additional movement speed now. It used to be like 50, so it's not as good as it used to be. Still good, but not as important. I'm going to recommend going with Adrenaline Rush. Adrenaline Rush, when you use it, gives you an additional 15% action speed for 8 seconds. There's a bit of a come down period after you know, the rush is over, but for those 8 seconds, you're going to swing a lot faster, you're going to block a lot faster. And when you're in the height of a melee situation, that extra 15% action speed can make a big difference. I'm not going to go into the other perks and skills in this video, 
Um, but there's definitely a lot of different compositions you can make with Fighter, and I recommend you explore them for yourself, or check out some of the other videos I have that talk about a few of these. I think Shield Slam in particular was really interesting. But I'm at a crossroads, because if you look, with my Buckler, my Heater Shield, and my Survival Bow, I'm at 25. So I have to make some hard choices here. I don't want to go in at just 25 gear score, because that's going to put me in the more difficult lobby. I want to stay at 24 or below. So I wonder, what can I subtract from my loadout to bring my score down by one? I could put the buckler away, and maybe not mess around with switching my shield, but I'm kind of interested in this. I could put my survival bow away, and that'll take me down, but then I don't have a ranged option beyond my throwing axes, which isn't great. So I want to keep my survival bow. I wonder if I can drop my gloves. Chances are I'm going to be able to find a pair of gloves in the dungeon. I, I'm not that worried about losing the base stats they provide. Maybe I'll do that. So I'm going to go into the dungeon. This is my loadout. I've got my heater shield, my buckler shield, my arming sword, my survival bow, my crusader helm, grand brigadine, cloth pants, and adventure boots. This is my starting kit that's going to keep me at that lower gear score in that lower lobby, which is what I want. Okay, let's drop in and see how this kit looks in action. He's healing. Ranger's trapped. Block him. <laughs> Second wind. Oi! Oi! I bet you weren't reloaded. I'm sorry, dude. That was pretty sloppy, but... So much space above the shield. You gotta look up, buddy. Okay, there's the bard. It was downstairs. <laughs> Surprised him. Scared the piss out of me, friend. <laughs> so he's just gonna kite me around. Now he's a bit trapped. Not too worried about that. Third one. <clears throat> he's going for my head, which is smart. Second wind. Blocked him. Blocked him. I went for the trade. That was a bit dangerous, but... Oh, GG, man. Maybe her bare feet. Yeah, I hear someone opening a chest. Let's see what's up. Okay, this poor person can barely hear me. I'm crouch walking, so especially against novice or inexperienced players who aren't familiar with all the game sounds yet, if you crouch walk, you can get really close to them. So they took a hit from the mob, so they're weak already. Bats are so annoying. Okay. And then I'm gonna leave the mob alive. Oh. My intention there was to attack while the bat was still alive, because if you can attack while there's still an active mob that is aggroed on them, it really makes it more stressful for your opponents. So that's what I was trying to do there, but I didn't realize how low on health 
that person was. Sorry, Jesse. Sorry, guy. I'm sorry. I'm behind you, man. Hey. Hey, how are you? Hi, how are you? I got some stuff for you. There's some stuff for you. Yeah, you go for it, man. Go for it. You gotta watch for traps on the ground. See the square thing? That's a trap. Don't step on it. So here on the left... This is an escape gate, so eventually this will open up, and you just walk out here to get out of the dungeon. But you gotta wait for it to open up. Yeah, the good thing is. Wait before you go. Come on back here. Pick up this stuff. Take this stuff before you go. Take take this stuff before you go here. If you have space. Yeah, yeah, man. Have a great night. Have a great night, man. Okay, now let's load it up and drop into the normals again, but with a higher gear score, 244 this time. Uh, nothing crazy. We just got my Crusader Helm, Grand Brigadine, Heavy Gauntlets, Cloth Pants, Venture Boots. I just found a Tattered Cloak. I've got a Blue Arming Sword. I'm going to bring in a Rapier, a Flanged Mace, and a Buckler. Just for situational combat, I might want to switch to these things to make me move faster or hit harder against armored opponents. We'll see what happens. Um, jewelry is just Ring of Courage and Ox Pendant, and I picked these up the last run I had too, so I'm gonna go to Normals, Goblin Caves, let's go. I'm not gonna be looting bodies or chests too much, because I'm looking more for PvP. I can see this door is open. So some signs of life. This is a good example of why you should always close doors behind you, because I can move through this door silently. If that door was closed and he was closer, then he would hear me coming through the door. Because I have no idea who I'm up against the normals here with uncapped gear, I'm being very, very careful. I imagine the worst. I imagine these are players that could have hundreds if not thousands of hours of experience. So I want to get the drop on them if I can. That's why I'm turning off all of these lights. Again, I'm listening. He's here. I missed my chance. It's a barbarian. He's in a corner. Free hit. I got a block. I got a block. I'm gonna go for two. I'm gonna go for another one. Okay. I'm gonna second wind. I'm gonna adrenaline spike. He's gonna... He's stuck. He was stuck on his throwings there. Okay, whenever he misses, it takes a long time to reset. So missing is good. Wow, that was very close. I think he hit me at the end. I shouldn't have tried to trade. I should just go block, attack, block, attack. But I got a bit greedy. He has a lot of heals. He has very nice pants. This stuff probably sells. True physical damage. Agility. Let's take it. I'm just going to heal up. There's also a faux pas. You should always heal before looting. And I was just so excited there, I didn't do that. I'm also going to campfire. Because I used my second wind in that fight. He's going to loot the bodies. I'm going to hit this light. This is a bit dangerous. Let's see how close I can get to him. Turn on this light behind me. Okay, now see how close I can get. Turn on my, my adrenaline spike. Here we go. Body blocking. I'm body blocking him. He's in trouble. <laughs> okay. So that's the power of stealth. This guy is not paying attention. And I can get pretty close to him. Oh, 
the wizard. Hit him. Oh, he died. You know, you can block these axe traps. Makes it a lot easier to move through them. Thanks, shield. Okay, maybe this person is camping the exit. It looks like they might be. Okay, it's totally dark in here. I imagine there's a person. Yeah, I can see them right here. I'm gonna wait for him. Okay, that's a sprint. Now it's easier for me to see him. <laughs> He's on the trap. Oh, poor guy. That's it. Good night, sir. Now that we're getting late stage goblin caves, you can see the fog starts coming in the dust as the cave starts to crumble. This fog looks really pretty, but it has volumetric light. So you can see all the little dark corners. You can see all the little edges. It makes it really hard to hide late stage goblin caves. So this kind of creeping and hiding game that we've been playing, this map, look how easy it is to see all the nooks and crannies. It's very hard to hide late stage goblin caves. So just keep that in mind. Okay, we're in the so-called cursed spawn in the bottom left of the map. I like this spawn. I'm learning to like the spawn. There's two great routes. You can go to the right through the goblin camp. That's a fun route. Or you can go straight north through... I'm not sure what this module is called. Through Valley A. <laughs> ah, beautiful Valley A. And as I push through here, I'm moving pretty quick. So chances are there'll be another player not too far into one of these other modules. I think I can hear him bandaging. I'm pushing it. Yeah, he's right here. It's an axe. Yep. I got a free hit. He's got his throwing axes. I blocked his felling axe. He's gonna miss. Now I can hit and hit. Because it takes a long time to recharge. A block. Hit. Wow. Oops. So that was a pretty clean fight. He got me with a throwing axe. But otherwise, I had his number. Look at this guy. Sad. I don't think I even need anything here. Maybe I'll take a throwing axe. But mine are better. Oh, this one's good. I'll take these two, I guess. I haven't touched my survival bow. <laughs> That's okay. Okay. Let's keep going north and see who else we can find. It's a slayer. Arm the sword. Try to block him into the doorway. Okay, that was lucky. I think he was hurt. Cool. He's looting. I don't think he knows I'm here. Okay, it's a cleric. I'll do a mace as well. Let's see if I can drop down on him. That was kind of a missed opportunity. I'll jump over his shield. Yeah, he's hurt. Sorry, man. Okay, breaking. You can probably hear me open the door. Just gonna make a dark pocket here. Okay, boots to my left. He's behind me. It's a fighter. I love attacking when they get their, their thing out. Okay, I got a hit. Wait for it. That's one block. I'm gonna go for two. And I gotta finish him off here, I think. Okay, I knew I could trade him because he was lower.
Yo, no duty, homie. Come here, let's fight. <clears throat> Whoa, that is way too much damage. Why do you hurt so bad? Holy. Second wind. He's surging. Don't let him surge. I don't think he got it off. I hit him. He's hurt. <clears throat> oh, he got me in the head. I should have looked up. GG, man.